Welcome back here 730 here on a Monday. I'm Eric Connors and I'm Stella Escobedo. We are expecting a long day ahead for firefighters as they continue to fight a fire on board the USS Bonhomme Shard. News Ace Net at Rompor is live at Naval Base San Diego with the latest on the investigation 24 hours later and we are still seeing this fire. We can see the smoke right behind you Netta. Yeah, I want to get you caught up on what has been happening over the last few minutes. In fact, a lot darker smoke now coming out of this ship. Look at that. Uh, so watch as they make this airdrop from the helicopter right here. Watch what happens to the smoke. It's been uh, really dark here since about 710. So about 20 minutes ago, we really started to see that more intense, darker smoke. And look, they're making that drop right now. And you can see the darker smoke kind of swirling around. So we've been watching that over and over again. These drops have been continuously happening earlier. I said they're about five minutes apart. Now they're within seconds apart. Here's another helicopter coming right up. They're getting all the water straight from the San Diego Bay. So of course, there's plenty for them to use. And this is really their main way of attacking this fire. At this point, they cannot get on that ship at all. It is way too hot for anyone to step foot on it. One of the Navy veterans who's out here watching this with us says you know a fire like this can basically turn the ship into an oven it started in the lower cargo area and you can see clearly it has spread to several of the decks at the bottom there and also now because it's just burning much darker it leads us to wonder what is burning now because uh, earlier they did say there was a lot of berthing equipment a lot of the uh, marine corps equipment that's what was burning office equipment as well they did say according to the navy times that nothing toxic was on board of this ship but really you have to wonder what's burning then because it really has gotten so dark here in just the past 20 minutes or so ago you saw another drop now so just during our live shot there's three of them uh, there's the fourth coming in as well and also on the ground i should say there's a couple engines right there they have been pouring water onto this non-stop overnight hours early morning hours i mean they're getting all the water from the bay dumping it on the ship but then they're also dumping water off of it so that it doesn't sink they can't have that water flooding the carrier obviously because that could lead to a whole nother set of problems let's show you some video now just as the smoke really getting started getting darker here the past few minutes our photographer chris was able to get that view for you and all of this really starting at 8 30 sunday morning so it's remarkable to see nearly 24 hours later how intensely it's still burning and how much smoke is still coming out of this about 160 sailors were on board at the time they all made it out alive thankfully now the bottom are is an amphibious assault ship. It's home ported right here in San Diego. It normally has a crew of about a thousand sailors, but because it has been undergoing maintenance, less than 20% of the crew was on board when this fire started. It started as a three alarm fire, and it appears again it started in the lower portion, the cargo area. That's where marine equipment is stored. It's a rather large area. And at one point there was an explosion. Take a listen now to that Navy veteran, David D., who tells us they certainly do train for this, but it's still pretty tough to watch and a very rare thing to have happen. Absolute mayhem at this point, but the fact is, it's like if a fire of this size, this type, uh, relatively, they're doing the best that they can with what they have. Um, when the fire reaches a certain temperature and size, you just have to back off to let it burn out. And as you can see from the fire in that, it's a very intense fire. Uh, in that section of the ship where the actual birthing errors, as you're seeing right now, the office supplies, the birthing materials, it's just still burning at this point. And it, it reaches a temperature where the actual hull of the ship itself now becomes essentially a giant oven. Yeah, he said it could become hundreds of degrees there. That's how hot that steel can really get. And he actually said, you know, it can burn the plastic right off of their boots. Uh, certainly they don't want anyone going near the ship. So that's why they are attacking this defensively. They also had to move the USS Fitzgerald and the USS Russell. They shifted berths to appear farther away to make sure they're not damaged from all of this. They also asked people to shelter in place yesterday afternoon in this area if they're not first responders to clear the way for all of these firefighters. More than 100 have been out here and they continue to remain out here. So obviously there's still a lot more firefight ahead. Back here live, you can still see a couple now lines of water that are coming out 
towards the uh, ship here and of course another water drop as we watch all of this unfold really guys it's remarkable to see this happening to such a large ship it can just goes to show how intense that fire must be in the bottom decks and that lower cargo area for it to still send this much smoke billowing up ahead.